Hello everybody, and I'm doing this video from the United States of America. Yeehaw! <laughs> well, technically I am anyway. I'm a, where am I? Some air bay off. Some air. Uh, no, it's not. I'm at some air base in America. Well, I'm actually at some air base in, in England, but the second you go across the, through the gate, you're in America. So look at that. That is a runway. There you go. I probably shouldn't be filming this event. It's probably getting in trouble. But bearing in mind the fact we don't know where it is and do we've really seen this a runway, I'm probably they won't be that upset. So I thought this would be an ideal opportunity, he said, searching for his bins, um, to read out the. Um, this is like a sequel to one we did on delivering to airports. And I've got my mate Godzilla's works in an airport. So he actually was kind enough. I mean, he comments all the time, which is brilliant. And um, he was kind enough to um, do the definitive guide on going airside in an airport. So I've written it all down. I'm not the greatest at reading it out loud, so bear with me. So this is it. It's sort of, right, this is from Godzilla's. Godzilla's, thank you. He says, I up. He said, okay, driving airside at an airport. You need either an ADP, which is an airside driving pass, off to school and it's 600 quid, or you jump through hoops. Coming in needs to be booked in advance. Both yourself and your vehicle will need, will need paperwork, so the vehicle's MOT has to be printed off and forwarded to get the pass, and the driver DL plus DVLA code has to be given in advance along with the mugshot. The company you are dropping off for submits this. On the day you rock up to the correct gate, I'm at gate seven, was at gate seven, um, and they rock up the correct gate and arrange time. Just like you are off on your holes, everything needs to be removed from the vehicle and put through x-ray. Anything electronic, so your sat nav, phone, anything not attached to you has to go through the machine. Liquids are a massive issue with a couple, with the usual, a couple of bottles can go through both the x-ray and the drinks machine, screen wash bottle, or even five litre bottle of oil, not a chance. That's a worry, isn't it? Um, it's way worse than prisons. Because I've done prisons before and they do tend to put the mirrors underneath. They got a bit more um, hot on it after some geezer escaped. But yeah, they're normally pretty good prisons. They don't, they're not too bad. But then you're accompanied all of the time. But then I imagine with airports you're accompanied all the time. Let's read on and find out. Um, they seem, prisons, they seem easy by comparison. So, security or, that's not for me, right? uh, security or ops will then need uh, to convoy you inside. Convoy, yeah. Certain airports are paying with, well, hang on, that's a geezer. Hold on a second. And Hello again. I am no longer in the airbase. Um, basically, I started making the video and then a guy come up and he said, right, we're ready to see you in now and you can't use your phone beyond this point. And then, of course, I was unloading and then that see me out. So what I would normally do is I'd start reshooting the video. Uh, but instead, through the magic of uh, computers, I will knit it all together. I'm not on the airbase. I'm now in Siren Sister. Airbase was in Siren Sister. Very pretty. Very you rural. One job coming out is going to Wales. So, I mean, there's a good chance I won't make it home tonight, but there you go. I did book this job for um, one of the trampers, but then he did so wrong with the first job. So, I'm it's okay. I've got the fog down bed. I was in Battersea Power Station the other day. I'm fine. Uh, at night time. It, you, you don't care. It's not important. It's not about airports. Right. So, where was we up to? So, uh, prison's easy by comparison. Um, so, uh, so, security ops will then convoy you inside. Um, certain airports are a pain with one-way systems that make no sense. Um, with uncontrolled crossings, aircraft taxi across these areas. Uh, either way, you have areas you can go and areas where you can't go and areas where you can go in, but you can't come out the same way. Uh, the same way you get in, he said, No, I'm not kidding. Don't cross the black and whites, whatever you do. Enjoy enjoy the jet blast if there's something pushing out. 184 meters on a 747, by the way, take um take ear protection. So I'm assuming that's because they're very loud as well as very powerful. Um if a plane's got anti-coils, red and white flashing lights, don't whatever you do go near etc etc basically it's a bag of stress you can't get right hence there's a few people allowed on 
in it in on a visitor's pass. Oh, and if, for example, security come to open a gate that costs the shipper 40 quid a time, nothing is cheaper than an airport. So every time they open a gate, it costs you 40 quid. Uh, mess it up and you face a six to 12 month ban, which oddly doesn't travel to other airports that you're banned in. So it's not like football. It's about airports. Um, sneak over a line in Luton, banned. Next day you drive straight into Manchester without an issue. As a tanker driver, I get to run one-way systems the wrong way, hassle air traffic control to pop into areas others can't, and the best bit, I get to drive under planes where no one else can in the entire airport can. Hey, drive. oh, look at that. Have you got a glass roof? No, I doubt it. I don't see any reason why a tanker would have a glass roof. As a tanker driver, oh, yeah, you've done that bit. Um, all all this while, stressed, while steering a 65 tonne of sloshing fun on an extra long Arctic between two and three million quid's worth of plane. <laughs> I bet it's fun in the ice, mate. Um, it's all a bit wild west for tanker drivers right up until it isn't and you get a ban. As I write this, um, they're gritting the taxiways in my airport. I'm not allowed to say which one due to security. Yeah, it's curious time and things, like American air bases. Um, a gritter with extendable arms is doing its thing. It's not possible to do lots of passes, hence it's a single pass, which is then being followed by the fire service. No idea why. Presumably in case the salt catches fire. Um, and security. It's just what they do. 50 foot away from me, the world's coldest man is in a truck mounted a truck mounted cherry picker spraying the wings of a Ryanair 737 with sugary water defrost uh, beyond this an, Ambe an Embara one E170 with my name on it is waiting for 20 tonne of fuel so I can't wait, it's cold out here there is a supplemental he did a supplemental and you know, and I managed to print this because it's only a little one, so I printed it on bigger writing. So he said, Pete, always a pleasure because I asked him, but I said thanks for doing the airport thing. He said, um, if you need any more information, ask away. It's a, it is a rare but extremely lucrative bit of work. This is airports. Uh, well, you know that. You've been watching the video about it. Uh, so it's worth having info out there. As a rule, we have skips popping in. Couriers for... I mean, skips, I assume, is the vans popping in and out, like, you know? Couriers from small vans to HGV. What comes in has to go out. So a tyre dropped, has to, but one has to be removed from sight. Due to security, not exactly being rushed... Um, a standard charges place, so anything coming in gets massively loaded price-wise. There's also other facets that you wouldn't think of. We check the fuel almost hourly, and lots gets reprocessed or thrown away. This means IBC containers getting shuffled around the country. Planes get emery sprayed more often than you would ever guess. The paint and sticker packs have been dropped off and, uh, and sure enough, airside. There's lots of items, such as duty-free, for example, that that comes in that needs permits and airside DL. Any more information, I'm happy to oblige. So if anyone's got any questions more than that about airports, please stick them on the Sunday Q&A. But I think we must have pretty much covered it by now. I'd like to say a big thank you to Godzilla for all of the comments that he's put in. And it's about time you made your own video, mate. You well deserve it. And driving that tanker in the ice, in the snow, another courier driver out there, showing us all how to take care and take money.